The following broadcast is a presentation of Mount Zion Media Ministry. Chapter 2, and uh, Genesis is in the, in the front of the book, just go to the front. And I'll be reading from the New International Version, and I'll be reading um, verses 18 through 24, same verses I read on last week. Uh, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord said, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Amen. The reading of the word, you may be seated. And today we continue to talk about Relationships 101 and um, subtopic, what you should be looking for. And I've suggested in the two previous sermons and will suggest again today that you've got to have the right foundation if you're going to build a solid relationship whether it's marriage or courting or in some other endeavor where you are engaged with other people. And if the foundation is not right, then the relationship and the work you're going to do is going to be difficult. And I am suggesting to you that in getting our relationships up and going and choosing and building those relationships, most of us, if not all of us, have been looking for the wrong thing. And so we've been trying to focus on what God says we ought to be looking for. And in the first sermon, we discovered that we ought to be looking for commitment. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself first, take up his cross and follow me. And Jesus laid down the standard in our relationship with him that what I need from you first is commitment. Because listen, I don't care how gifted and talented you are, if you are not committed then that gift and talent does us no good. Then we looked at on last Sunday the idea of a completer, somebody who comes along and is suitable for you. We saw how God presented all the animals and everything that he had created for Adam to look at, to examine, to study, even to name. And Adam discovered after looking at all of that that none of what God brought before him was suitable for him. None of it uh, could help him complete his assignment. And so God made a woman and brought her before him. And then Adam recognized that what was in front of him was designed to complete him. So you need somebody who can complete you. And so today I want to move into this third element, in which will be the final element in this installment. Then we, we're going to move up to another level. We're going to get you out of the basics. And that is, you need somebody that you can build capacity with. 
build capacity. You ought to be looking for somebody that you can build capacity with. And um, uh, uh, un understand, as I go through the sermon, I'm talking about this on multiple levels. One, I'm talking about if you're going to be dating somebody and, and you're looking toward marriage, then you want to make sure that you are examining that person as a person that you can build capacity with. If you're already married, you want to be examining the capacity that you and your mate already have. And then when you, when you look at your calling, and I'm going to talk about more about that later, but, but the thing that God has called you to, uh, when God says it's not good for man to be alone, he's not just talking about marriage and relationships between the man and the woman, but he's talking about man cannot do what I've assigned him to do by himself. The man, the woman needs some other people. And so as I preach, understand, I'm also talking about those people in your inner circle. That five or six people that are around you, close to you, that you've chosen to help you become in life what God has called you to become. You need to be careful and look at them too and make sure they got capacity. And so with that, let me just move on and get into this message today. What I'm getting ready to say to you now, you, you ought to pay real close attention because herein lies your prosperity. If we can get this right, if you can get this right, you'll never be broke again. The reason, the reason, well, one of the reasons the Jewish people, uh, percentage-wise, are some of the wealthiest people in the world is because they understand how to read this Bible. In particular, this Old Testament, because that's their Bible. Listen at the instructions that God gives to Adam, to Eve. And therein lies your pathway to prosperity. He says, Adam, Eve, before I brought you into the world, I created everything that you needed to be productive. It's mine. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. However, I am giving it to you. I'm not giving you the deed, but I'm giving it to you as a stewardship responsibility. And these are the three words that he uses. I am authorizing you to have dominion over everything that I've created. Say dominion. Which means, when you have dominion, you have a domain. That there's something that's yours. There's something that has been assigned to you, and you have dominion over that. It's yours. And then he said, to subdue it. And that word means to manage. This is your domain, and I need you to manage it. And if you manage it well, it will enable you to be fruitful and multiply. And again, the fruitful and multiply is more than having babies. But I will enable you based on the way you handle your dominion, based on the way you manage what you have to be fruitful and productive. And so included in this also is the idea that... Um, God, God, God has what's, what's called the year of Jubilee in that Old Testament setting, which means that the land that was assigned to a particular group, they could never lose it. Because if they got in financial trouble and they mortgaged it, in the year of Jubilee, the 50th year, whoever had the mortgage had to release it, even if it wasn't paid in full, and give it back to the people that it originally belonged to because God gave them dominion over that for their livelihood but more than for their livelihood to do what he had called them to do, their purpose, to have dominion, to manage, and to be fruitful. Let me ask you this. How many of you work with a Jewish person in an hourly wage job? You're going to be hard to find a Jewish person who works as a wage earner because their Bible teaches them that you were not brought here to work for somebody else by the hour. 
but you were brought here to have dominion over your own and manage your own and you let other folk work for you. You don't raise your children to get a job. You raise your children to own a company, to have dominion over something. And, and, and if they happen to work for somebody, you, you, you don't go there with the mentality, I'm, I'm just going to be here, do my 30 years, and then go on out and retire. But no, you go there understanding that you're going to transform the way this thing works. That this particular area I work in, this is my domain, and I'm going to manage it so that it becomes fruitful for me as well as the company. And if we could get this, this mindset, dominion, and managing well, managing well, whether you own it or somebody else, managing it well, and then having a system to be productive. What a change in our economic plight. So, listen. And so Adam and Eve both understand, ladies, both understand that they have a calling on their life. Not a career. A career is what you do to make a living. A calling is what you do as a part of your life. It's, it's why you live. It's why you wake up in the morning. And so God has given Adam and Eve a calling on their life. Dominion management, being fruitful. And they would do it in different ways and everybody do it in different ways. But ultimately, God expects you to maximize the domain he has given you. The, the, the management of it, the fruitfulness. But God understands that you can't do it by yourself. And so, he says, let me find somebody suitable for you. And so he brings this woman to him and Adam recognized that this is the woman suitable for me. And part of what he recognized, in, addi in addition to the person who can complete him, she has the capacity to help me. Not everybody and everything has the capacity to handle him. Because some people can't handle your domain, your management, and your fruitfulness. And so both parties come with their own capacity and then as the Bible says, and they become one and so when you get together you are no more two but one and so together now you got to build capacity together. You got your own. But can you come together and increase the capacity that you have together as one? The people who are in my inner circle, can they handle my domain? Can they handle my management, can they handle my fruitfulness, my productivity, and bring theirs alongside me? Can I handle theirs? And then we move. Some of y'all said, oh, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. See, some people don't have the intellectual capacity. And, and let me be clear, because some of you get confused when I say intellect. I'm not talking about the degree they have. Because that is not a measure of my intellectual capacity. Some of the most insecure people in the world are people who are highly educated. That's why they insist on you putting a handle on their name. That's why if you ask them their name, Dr. Leroy. I, I thought your birth certificate said Leroy Brown. It, no, 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 it's Dr. Leroy Brown. As if I cannot be anybody. Uh, excuse me, who, who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm the chief engineer at uh, Charlie Brown Club. That doesn't tell me who you are. That tells me what you do. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about education. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about IQ. But I'm, but I'm talking about the ability, my own ability to deal with what God has given me to make me who I am but also the people God has put me in relationship with, do I have the capacity to handle intellectually? Can I process it? In my mindset, in my perspective, can I see it without being jealous? Can I handle it without being envious? Can I help you build your capacity and see you soar, even if it's beyond me, without becoming a hater? 
Let me let me let y'all in on a little secret. There's something that, there's something you don't know. You don't you don't know this, but a lot of lot of fussing and fighting between couples. It's not about what you think it's about. It's really about that person's inability to handle to handle who God is making you. To handle your domain. To handle your management. To handle the product, productivity in your life. Intellectually, they, they can't handle that. Emotionally, they can't handle that. And these negative feelings come in. And, that, and that's why they're super critical of you. That dress really looked good on you. But they're telling you, you, you don't look good. It ain't about the dress. He's trying to knock your ego down a notch. Yeah, yeah. She, she really not mad with you about the time that you got home last night. It's really about trying to knock you down a notch. Because you, you're doing too much. You think you're something now. And then, and then the uh, people in your circle that you're trying to work with, you start talking about this and, 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 and you find all of a sudden they start saying, saying stuff like, you change. And they start trying to become a stumbling block in your way. And, and uh, that's because everybody can't handle it. Let, let, me, let me just make it plain. Uh, and so there are these, there's this family who, who, who was a, just this wonderful family. 12, 12 boys, not, not even counting the girls, just 12 sons. And so the, the a baby boy, God chooses him. All the brothers doing some good stuff, but God chooses this baby boy and, and gives him a vision as a young boy to say to him that I'm going to promote you to such a level that based on the domain, the domain that I give you and what I put you in charge to manage and your productivity, you will lead even your brothers. Even your mama and daddy will have to bow to you. And the brothers who loved him for no other reason than where God was taking him, they turned on him. Same family, same blood, getting along until he makes an announcement that God has shown me that he's going to take me to another level. The envy, the jealousy, they don't have the intellectual capacity to process the fact that the baby boy going to outdo everybody else. They, they don't have the intellectual capacity that the baby boy going to be wealthier than all of them. Emotionally, they can't sit in the same room with him without jealousy and envy and some hatred because of where God has taken him. And so they plot to kill him. They take him. And they're going to kill him. But God said the plan that I have for him won't be stopped because of your inability. Because of your lack of capacity to deal with where I'm taking him. So God got in one of the brothers, Reuben, and said, fake the death, sell him, but don't let him kill him. And that's what they did. They sold the brother, went home and told the daddy that the brother was dead. Got rid of him. All because they didn't have enough capacity to deal with where God was taking him. I'm telling you, family and friends, you need to look close to make sure they got the capacity to handle where you're going emotionally, intellectually, or else you're going to be fussing. You might end up in a pit. Because listen, the emotion of hatred, envy, and love, I'm sorry, envy and jealousy, will override the emotion of love. And even though they love you, to keep you from rising, they'll put you in a pit. Kill your dreams. Sell you as a slave. All because they can't handle it. Let me tell you another story. So, uh, these two lawyers, they meet on a blind date. It's 2014. And they hit it off. And then 
They end up getting married. They're both lawyers. But the man works for a prestigious law firm. He's a partner. And he makes three times the money that his wife makes because she's a lawyer for the government. And they don't make much money. And so she makes three times the salary, and they're in this relationship, and it's very traditional. He's the breadwinner. He, he's, he's out front. He has the most prominent spotlight. But then she decides she want to pursue some political aspirations. So she decides she want to run for the U.S. Senate. And so she does, and she wins. And all of a sudden now, the roles have flipped. He still makes more money, but she has a more prominent face and role. And now all he is is her husband. Nobody cares about this prestigious law firm that you have. You got an office in California. You got an office in D.C. And, and, you, and you represent some of the top people in the world. We don't care no more. And not only that, but, but your wife also makes a decision. I'm not going to carry your name. I, I, I know we, we are married, but your name just won't fit with where I'm trying to go. And so I'm going to keep my name. And then, and then, this, this U.S. Senator, because of, of her, you know, her, her efforts and the work and, and because of the way she handled that domain in the Senate, the way she managed that thing and how productive she is, somebody said, you ought to run for president. And so she throws her name in the, in the hat for the presidency. And now this, this husband is in even a darker shadow. But he comes out and says a woman's place is in the White House and throws all of this support behind her. And then she doesn't win the bid, but she's chosen as the VP candidate. And then they win, and now she's the vice president of the United States, and he's the first gentleman. <laughs> and his career, you know, is basically gone. And now he just followed his wife. And, and she's a rising star. She's, without his name, and, um, and ultimately will earn more money and just, you know, he's going to be the afterthought. Can I tell you that her bid to get where she is now could have been blocked had he not had the capacity to handle all that God was doing with her. I, every man, every woman couldn't have handled that. No, y'all, y'all, you sit up in crap if you want to, but you can't handle even some of the stuff that ain't even on that level she doing. All that attention. Oh. You... <laughs> She, 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 um, because of, of the work, and by, and by you, you know, y'all know I'm talking about president, and so, and, and so she has to work with men. She stands up with a man on stage, and they holding hands together while you standing back there somewhere. <laughs> Emotionally, you got to be a special kind of person. She, she's all over the world with all kind of people, and you at the house. Intellectually, can you process that and have perspective on that? Can you deal with it? And that goes both ways, men and women. And 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 so and so and so, can you handle it? And, and don't lie to me because because some of you fussing now. Who did that work you were talking to? Why y'all talking out the word? Y'all went to lunch together. And 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 especially if if she works in a setting with other men, he works in a setting with other women. It's, it's, I thought you were supposed to be working, but what you doing out here on my job? I just come out here to see what y'all are doing today. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so, and so you, he's get, getting too much attention. She's getting too much attention. She's, because you don't have the capacity to handle that. He's growing, but you decided not to grow. She's growing, but you decided not to grow. You, and, 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 and you need to build capacity together. 
Do you see me now? And so what, what you need to start doing is, is start examining with an open eye. If you're just meeting uh, and, and you're developing a relationship or even if you're in it now, you need to pause and examine a person's capacity and, rem and, and remember this, everybody is not where they will ultimately be. And so what you're looking for is a willingness to build capacity to together, to share your dreams and not have him or her react like Joseph's brothers did. To pursue your dream and act like Kamala's husband did. So, so you, 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 you want to look at their capacity. Can they handle it or, or, or will they be the people who sabotage it? And so when you're dating, it's more than how you look. It's more than how you drive. It's more than how she looks and what she's driving. It's, let, me, let me see what kind of intellectual capacity you got. And, 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 and just watch for and honestly examine their capacity to handle where you are. Because if they can't handle where you are, they surely can't handle where you're going. Listen, listen, listen. If, if, if you can't come home and share about what's happening where you are, you surely can't share at another level. And I'm talking about sharing without being shot down. Sharing without being made make the feel that, that, that what's happening to you is not even important. Let's talk about me. I'm talking about saying, saying babe, we, we, we need to grow in this area and we need to grow in this area. Well, that, 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 that just ain't me. That ain't what I do. I don't, I don't do all that. I, I, I. You, you, you just go and do what you do because you, you think you're all that, but, but I'm I'm just me. And so you go do it. And then if, if, if you're not careful, you might get shot. You might get cut. You might get beat down. You might get verbal abused for doing it. Because she can't handle it. Because he can't handle it. Because your friends can't handle it. So you're, you're looking, can, can, can they handle? Can they handle where I am now? Is there interest in growing or have you settled right where you are? And the signs are there. You just got to see them. You got to take them rose-colored glass off and you're in love. Like, oh, I just love it. No, I just love it. Ooh. He don't even stink. Ooh. She don't even stink. Ooh, yes, she do. Her breath don't stink when she wake up in the morning. Yes, she do. His breath stink in the morning. Your stink. Ain't no wrong, ain't no wrong nowhere. We just the perfect. You will lie. That does not exist. Open your eyes and see. Where's, where's that willingness from? And then watch, watch. I'm trying to help you now. Watch how they talk about and respond to other people that God has. Thanks for watching. Be blessed and continue walking in the light.